Ramadan Amazar is a unique and the first of, uh, of uh, its kind initiative to empower an, uh, an, an, an unprivileged segment of women in Africa, women who suffered infertility. They've been uh, uh, actually, uh, if we be honest, neglected and mistreated and discriminated. In some cultures, women who cannot bear a child or be pregnant can actually uh, be uh, mistreated, uh, disinherited, and uh, denied access to food, sometimes, to uh, family dues, to uh, actually be victim of, uh, of uh, violence, psychological and physical violence, pushed to suicide or killed. And this is a very severe situation. I mean, you will not believe it until you see and watch with us today the videos we are going to show you. And this is not going to be the right thing to ignore it and just let it be. That's why we created in, at Merck, Merck More Than a Mother initiative to say that women are more than mothers. In Africa, uh, there is few numbers, it will shock you. The, one couple every four couples are infertile, which is a very high number compared to developed countries. But 85% of these infertility cases can be preventable, can be preventable because it's due to untreated infectious diseases which is due to many also practices, uh, wrong practices we are advocating for, like uh, child marriage, that inf the infectious disease, which is a result of child marriage, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, genital mutation, uh, sexual transmitted diseases, which cannot be de detected early because it's misdiagnosed or for lack of awareness. Merck is a, is a well-known leader in fertility and we have been in business for more than 20 years. Uh, we take pride of having developed a commercialized drag, drags that really changed perspective for uh, couples that wanted to have a family and, and were uh, confronted with infertility. So uh, we have done so for 20 years and, and, and most recently our strategy has gone from focusing exclusively on developing pharmaceuticals to offering um, uh, a broader support to uh, these uh, patients and these families that has the dream of having, of having a child. Uh, I believe this initiative, the More Than a Mother initiative, truly illustrates, first of all, um, our new strategy, so serving the patients in a holistic way. But most importantly, this, this initiative is actually bringing us back every day through each and every step we, we, we make, uh, is bringing us back to, to the very heart of our mission. We help create life uh, through everything we do around fertility. As a country, we know that of all the couples attempting to have a child, between 10 to 15 percent fail to have a child. And of course, you all know how distressing it can be for a couple to attempt to have children and then they cannot have the child. So of course, as a country, um, we have services available to help infertile women, but this is limited within the capital city in Kampala. And of course, we have just about five clinics available, but very expensive, that only those who are educated and only those who have the resources can actually go and get the services. And of course, in the countryside, if you move to the village, those women who are infertile do not know that their situation can actually be corrected for some of them. And others believe it is a curse. Others believe they have been bewitched. And so they live in that kind of state. So from the time we launched this campaign, we as a country, we as Ministry of Health are trying as much as possible to integrate fertility care services into the already existing health care services that we have. Since the law is not in place in most of African countries, we had to make sure that we have that law to regulate ART in, in Kenya. And as we speak right now, I think we are the first country, is it in the whole of Africa, 
right? Sub -sub -sub Saharan Africa to have uh, brought the ART bill in the House. And right now it, is, uh, it has been passed at the National Assembly. It has been taken to the Senate. And then from the Senate now, it comes back. If there are no amendments, then uh, the president ascends on it and it becomes law. Um, as you can uh, see from the video, when I got my son, because <coughs> we didn't have the law into place, I had to go through adoption. Surrogacy. Yes, because I had to, uh, I used a surrogate mother. And because we don't have that law that governs surrogacy, I had to go through adoption to adopt my own son. And it was a long process. It took almost four years because to, to them it was a new thing. Um, not that IVF does not happen in the country. Yes, it does. Not that people don't seek surrogacy services. Yes, they do. But then how do they get the documents? Well, I think, I think the, the story, is, uh, the story um, is extremely moving. Uh, each and every story will show uh, illustrates the point that uh, that we that we discussed before. Each and every testimonial of this of this woman is actually inviting uh, us to uh, to continue to expand to do more. I think we live we live in a world of empower of empowered patients. We all want to make decisions for our health, uh, and this is happening every every uh, every day. So. Um, at the end, empowering this woman to make their own decisions um, has a lot to do with us. The issue of infertility is embedded in culture. The consequences of those cultural rules and cultural values are what you see from grace and what you hear from our colleague, um, Joyce. One of the key issue is that the cultural aspect in most African country is that you inherit, the, the wealth of most Africans are embedded in land and property. And so culturally, a girl child or a woman <coughs> inherits from where she's married. And when you are married, you are expected to give children in the place where you're married. So in Africa, when you don't give birth to a child, culturally, you are supposed to go back to your home. And that is the story you saw from Grace, where she stated she was married when she could not have the child, the husband told her to go back. And when she couldn't go back, she had to look for another opportunity. And when you go back where you are born after you got married, you are not even allowed to inherit any property or land from where you are born because your brothers and the children of the brothers are the one entitled to inherit. I am very, very grateful on behalf of Nigeria uh, to Merck uh, because what Merck is doing for Nigeria by this initiative is um, very, very huge. When you compare the population of Nigeria, Nigeria is the most populous uh, country in Africa. Uh, we have a population of about 170 million people. And when you consider the fact that one in four uh, of the population is supposed to be infertile, so we are saying we have about 40 million infertile people in Nigeria, which I mean is a wake-up call really for even me as a medical practitioner because if not for this Merck uh, initiative, I wouldn't have uh, put much attention to infertility like that. So I congratulate Merck for this God-sent initiative. We are looking forward to Merck coming to Nigeria in September. Yes. yes. September 27, when I will dress like a woman. <laughs> since I'm... Uh, the only female or male ambassador. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. But before then, I hope to have introduced uh, uh, the uh, ART bill okay. to make sure Kenya is not the only popular country <laughs> yeah. in uh, Africa that has introduced the bill successfully. Uh, we would have advanced a bit before you come in September by God's grace. Very good. Uh, we have. Uh, 
programs in which we go into developing uh, parts of the world uh, and we point at basic uh, infertility. What is, what, can, what is the infertility workup that any physician or any health provider, doesn't have to be a physician, mm -hmm. is able to do? Uh, and uh, how does one do a sperm analysis? Mm -hmm. Because how does one know that uh, a male is infertile. You have to have easy access in order uh, to do that. Uh, and those are areas that we uh, look at. Uh, the advocacy uh, and how we get, uh, avoid the stigmatization that occurs really, uh, uh, the parliamentarians uh, here have told us how to do that. You have to tell the public that there's a problem and you have to tell the problem, uh, the public, that there are things that you could do about it. In Africa, my pain, which led me to create a magazine called Health Awareness, was that many patients come to that clinic, and if you see the women, the level of torture they have experienced, laparoscopy, endoscopy, all the scopes have been done, all the HSN, uh, his sterile has been done. And when you look at the man for the first time, there's no sperm. And you wonder, why was this woman being subjected to all this level of intervention? And at the end of the day, by the time you are looking at this woman, those interventions have created problem on her, such as damaged blood tubes, and endometriosis from infection. So that has made me to realize that with the advent of in vitro fertilization, which we were the first to pioneer in Nigeria, with advancing technology, some of these patients were still not getting pregnant. So the peculiarity for Nigeria is, first of all, awareness and education education to prevent sexually transmitted disease, education to prevent the nutritional toxins that can lead to some of these things like fibroid or that can cause some environmental, uh, uh, some damage to the, to the reproductive organs. First, when I was invited to Kenya about a year ago, uh, uh, same same uh, sort of uh, perspective that I had, but I was struck to the fact that high infertility was really quite uh, uh, much worse than what, what we had when I uh, started the IVF program about 10 years ago in Jakarta. Um, we see so much of similarity in developing world, particularly when we are talking about the stigmatization of, of infertility towards women. And uh, when I, uh, we had this discussion about uh, how um, much we want to be involved, uh, particularly we're um, are doing a reasonably busy uh, center, about 2,000 cycles per year in our, our unit. And uh, we uh, have been training our cent uh, uh, human resources on our own uh, all this time. But uh, given the challenge that uh, was given, I thought I didn't have too much um, a time to think because uh, this would be a very, very exciting moment for African society because, of course, when we're looking at infertility treatment uh, in developing countries can be very uh, different, uh, particularly when we are uh, uh, managing patients with a different perception and also a different uh, environment to the developed world. And uh, I see that um, uh, the government, from the government viewpoint, that um, uh, what you point out about uh, previously infertility and pop infertility management and population management is completely different. You know, we, we are working now on some keys um, uh, to so some key solution is really to train and employ, employ community-based health officer. You know, in Africa, we have this health officer everywhere. Uh, they would, they, the, the, these people would provide essential primary care at the village level. And we are also trying to speed up uh, the last setup of uh, our uh, mobile phone-based telemedicine, which is a kind of uh, uh, digitalization, as you know. This will connect health officer and uh, a rural patient with uh, a specialist and uh, in the cities or a specialist even in Indonesia, if you like. Huh? 
if you still have some time. <laughs> <laughs> I really like to thank everyone for your patience and being with us. And uh, I think we, we have finished now the panel and we can invite everyone to have nice dinner and uh, we can interact together now offline after uh, we come down to our table. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs>